I am the co-director of the Global Health Center, and I am actually an infectious disease individual, so those who are from infectious disease usually choose are like to make quotes. So I picked up this quote from uh, Virchow, who is uh, very well known in infectious diseases, about medicine and social science and politics. And I think those of you in chronic disease field and with the UN conference coming can uh, appreciate um, this quote, which is uh, now uh, over 50 years old um, from one of the founders of microbiology. Um, in terms of um, this conference, uh, it grew out of a, an interesting uh, visit by Dr. Narayan to Albert Einstein College of Medicine where he gave a talk and in dinner after that talk, uh, he, um, myself, um, Dr. Kathy Anastos, who's the co-director of the Einstein Global Health Center, uh, Jill Ralfman, our uh, manager, and Meredith Hawkins, who's uh, uh, the director of what we call our Global Diabetes Initiative. Um, we're talking about the UN conference, and uh, with Einstein being a medical school in New York, uh, what we could do to bring attention to the problem of diabetes. And this conference grew out of that, and uh, Jill Ralfman, our manager, is to be uh, commended in the amount of tireless work she put to uh, get this conference uh, together. I think we've got a very interesting uh, speaker list for you, and I don't want to spend too much time talking before them. I'd like to introduce um, Dr. Spiegel who is the dean of the medical school. And I guess he doesn't need much more introduction other than saying, before coming to Einstein approximately six years ago, the, many of you may remember him from his role as a director of a very tiny institution outside of uh, Washington and Bethesda known as NIDDK. And I will leave it at that. Thank you very much, Lou. Uh, just apropos of the introduction, uh, Lou, Lou, of course, got it right. I can recall uh, shortly after coming to Einstein a press conference on the roof of the Bronx County Courthouse in which our then Bronx Borough President, Adolfo Carrion, introduced me in the presence of Mayor Bloomberg as the former NIH director. <laughs> and since that director at that time was Elias Zerhouni, uh, who had been at Hopkins, and Bloomberg has had something to do with Hopkins, uh, it was, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't correct the borough president though, that's not politic, but afterward Bloomberg came up and said, how's Elias doing? <laughs> so let me just say a few words because uh, I really do want to allow us to press on and get into the actual substance of the meeting. We're fortunate to have really some terrific speakers who've come from near and far and I appreciate uh, all of them and then all of you who've come to join us. Uh, I want to acknowledge Lou Weiss and Kathy Anastos, whom he referenced, who are the co-directors of our Einstein Global Health Center, and uh, Jill Ralfman, who's here, who helped support us, Meredith Hawkins, and others who are involved in organizing this meeting. Uh, if you'll allow me just a brief reflection on what Lou was referring to, uh, back in March of 06, on a Sunday evening, I took the shuttle from DC uh, up to LaGuardia, got off and arrived uh, in the Bronx, actually living the first four months in our student housing. We have three high rises for medical students and graduate students. And, and I always temper that so I don't appear to be grandstanding. I, I then moved to an apartment on the Upper East Side. So it's not, uh, it w but it was uh, really a revelation to me. I was aware of how outstanding Einstein was in a variety of ways in terms of basic science and certainly well aware of its diabetes center but I didn't really have a grasp of the dimensions of the diabetes problem in the Bronx, and just for those who aren't familiar, the Bronx with 1.3 to 1.5 million people, uh, the poorest urban county in the United States, the third poorest county, the other two are on the Texas-Mexico border, uh, has uh, a huge, huge problem uh, with diabetes. And this is not unique to the Bronx, parts of Brooklyn uh, within the city, and you see how I've narrowed my, my focus to begin with. Uh, if you look at the map of diabetes prevalence in New York City, something very peculiar, in fact, happens on the east side. When you cross 96th Street, you go from a very, very low prevalence of diabetes suddenly to a very high prevalence. And it's worth thinking about how that could be. But what was remarkable was the fact that we had people within the Bronx addressing this problem in extraordinary ways, and at the same time, 
a huge global health effort. And in fact, uh, one of our speakers, we'll hear from Elizabeth Walker, uh, is kind of, I, I view, simplistically, in parallel to someone like Kathy Anastos, whom I've referenced. Kathy Anastos was one of the principal people to develop an approach to the HIV epidemic in the Bronx in the 80s, when the Bronx was uh, arguably one of the epicenters of that epidemic, but then to translate from that approach to Rwanda, where many women uh, were afflicted with HIV as a result of being raped during the genocide. So this was kind of characteristic of Einstein involvement, first in this kind of incredible, uh, very, very diverse area of the Bronx, but then moving into a global health arena. And Elizabeth is doing similar things in Africa based on her experiences in the Bronx. So these are uh, examples that I think signal uh, the approaches that are going to be necessary. And uh, I finally just uh, share with you, uh, just wrote a, a commentary uh, with the title of Can Personalized Medicine and Genomics Help in prevention of uh, the epidemic of type 2 diabetes. And I'm struck uh, that we have, at one and the same time, uh, undoubtedly enormous challenges in terms of implementing public health approaches, which without equivocation are going to be vital, both in the US and globally, if we're going to be able to address this problem. But at the same time, we have all this phenomenal technology and genomics. Uh, I don't want to ask Dr. Fratkin uh, how many millions of dollars have been spent on genome-wide association studies worldwide to discover uh, susceptibility genes for type 2 diabetes. And yet, disappointingly, we, we find that they are not a very useful predictive power, that they account for only about 10 percent of the overall risk. And the questions that come up in terms of prioritizing our resources uh, can we abandon the, this high technology in an era when soon whole genomes will be sequenced? Uh, and then the further thing, even if we do get to that stage and it turns out to be useful in a personalized medicine approach, let's say to prevention of type 2 diabetes, how will that ever be implemented in resource poor areas such as developing countries? Uh, which, as we'll hear, are, are becoming almost equally afflicted. So these are enormous challenges that we have, and I really look forward then to our, our speakers shedding some light on this and, and heightening uh, our uh, attention to this enormous problem. Thank you very much, and we'll begin with the program per se.